I've been asked this question quite a lot, and it's an important one in terms of when you build a website, how, what's your methodology for sections, columns, and content, and mobile responsiveness? What order do you do things in? And my way of doing it is a little bit unconventional in that I like to do the section columns, obviously, and then I add in the content. And then I worry about the layout and how it looks and the paddings and margins and all of that. The reason I get the content in is because then I know, right, now what am I playing with? One of the problems is that if you have a website and you start to like get the section and you try and get the image to be absolutely perfect, when you then add in your header, you might then go back and redo a previous widget and you kind of duplicate effort. If you know what you're trying to get the look of, so you've got a Scribble or a Wireframe, Figma, Adobe XD, whatever, I prefer Scribbles, you will have an idea of what the content is. You know that you're going to have a, an image, a header, a subheader. You might have a call to action button, whatever. I'm, think, I'm talking about hero banners here. For every other section, you would know what the content is, or you should do rather than just creating blind. I'm going to show you the process I do. So I am going to add in a section with two columns. I am not going to mess around at the moment with the sections or the padding or the margins or anything like that. I sometimes do, but for this video, I'm not going to do it. The only thing I will do, though, is I will adjust the height. So I'm going to make a decision of, is this height going to be full height? So BH100. Is it going to be a pixel height of 400, 500 pixels? Or is it going to be 50% so BH500? Uh, I'm just going to leave this as a 400 pixel for now. Okay, I'm, I'm not going in depth into sections and columns, by the way. Um, right. Uh, now, I uh, the other thing I will do, though, also is I will do the boxed as well. So I'll decide, is it full width or is it boxed? I'm just going to go with boxed 900 so you can see everything. Actually, you can't see that, can you? Let's go with 800. So you can see everything on the screen that I'm currently using. The columns gap, I might make a decision at this point here. So the only thing I'll do is boxed or full width. If it's boxed width, what is the width? What is the column gap? What is the minimum height? And that's it. I won't start messing around with the columns either at this point. Now what I'm going to do is just start dropping in my content. So I might have a header. I might have another header, which will be like a, a header free maybe. I mean, I might have uh, some text maybe. I'm just rushing through this now, right? And then I might say, okay, I'm going to have a call to action button as well. Something like that. And then I'll decide, right, am I going to have an image? Am I going to have a background image? Am I going to have an image over here? It's going to go over here and drop in a image. And I'm just going to pick one of the ones I've got here. I'm not overly fussed too much about it yet. And uh, we'll do that. And I also might add in a background image as well. You know, and, and when you do a background image for your section, the only tips I have for that are that obviously when you've picked your image, I'm just going to pick one here and then get rid of it. When you've got in your background image, you're going to decide is the position uh, center center? Is it uh, fixed or scroll? So if it's fixed, when you're, uh, the image will stay in place as the words scroll up over it as you scroll. And the scroll effect is going to be the image and any wording or content will scroll up and down at the same time. And of course, you would, oops, sorry, let me just put it back to default for now. And then you're going to pick, right, are you going to go for like a repeat or a no repeat? I tend to always go with no repeat. And then for the size, you know, I tend to go with cover because you want to fill it or you might go with contain. But again, we're not focusing on that. We're just focusing on how I like to do things. So I'm going to get rid of the background image for now, but I wanted to cover it off in case anyone has it and they weren't sure of what to do there. Now you've got your content in your section. This is the point when you start to mess around with your margins and your padding, because I now know what I'm playing with. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to this image here. I'm going to go to uh, set this to be a full, and I'm going to go to style and start to decide, well, how big is it going to be? So if I'm going for a box width of 900, I now know that, right, I've got 900 pixel estate to play with. How much do I want this image to take up? And I might either go with percentage or I might be very specific because this image is only uh, 300 pixels by 300 in terms of how I scaled and sized it in the media library or Photoshop or Canva or anything like that. So I'm going to go with 300, whatever, like that. And that's my image. I'm then going to go over to section one, sorry, column one, and decide now how big is column one going to be in relation to column two. So I'm just going to go over to here and just move this over a little bit. Don't forget, though, you know, um, you could just go to the section here. 
go down to structure when my mouse moves. Sorry, layout, go down to structure and I could just do this as well. So I could adjust the layout like that and get it again clinically done. Or you can just drag your columns to be the size you want. It's always easier when you have your content on. If you just had your header or you had no content, you just had two empty columns and you start moving things around, you might think it's okay. Add things on and then go, oh no, that's looking too tight, not so good. So you can start to play around with how you want. Now I'm going to go to column one. It's too close to column two. So we're going to go to advanced and I am going to get rid of some of the right hand side margin. So I'm going to bring it inwards by about, we'll go with, uh, we'll go with 70. So we've got some breathing space from column two. Now, I'm not going to modify the sizing of the wording or anything here because that's all, you know, you should know all this. I recommend you use REM when you come to do the styling of the size. Okay, pick REM, you know, start with number two and then build it up to exactly what size you want to be. It's good for responsiveness, okay? Same with your subheader, same with your text, same with your font, uh, font button, same with your button as well. Do REM over there. At the moment, we have this 100, no, not 100, what was it? Sorry, it wasn't 100, what did I do? 70 pixel margin from the right. You can use EM, you can use REM, you can use percentage. I tend to just go with pixel, um, mainly because I'm doing a box width here. Um, it's up to you what you do here at this point, okay? Now, as far as I'm concerned, column one and column two are kind of okay. I'm just gonna go back to my section. The column position is in the middle. I'm just going to go over to uh, column one now, go to layout and make sure the vertical alignment is also in the middle. I'm going to go to column two. I'm going to make sure the vertical alignment for that is also in the middle. Now, I've just noticed my image is now creeping out. So I'm just going to shrink this over a little bit here um, to bring it inwards. So I just need to shrink. I hope that made sense. It was creeping out there, which I don't really want. It was a tiny bit, so I could have got away with it. Now, if I um, uh, hit the chevron, that is looking okay at the moment, all right? So even though our section over here has no gap, okay, we still have spacing above and below the content. Why? Well, if I get rid of the minimum height, we wouldn't have that spacing. Everything is now tight. By having 400, we're actually okay. But what if we hadn't set a minimum height? So we've got a section, we've done our width, we've put our columns, we've adjusted the column a tiny bit, we've added in our content. If we don't want to do minimum height, and again, this is something else I sometimes do, is I go over to the advanced, and this is now where I'm going to add in my padding. So I might say there's got to be a minimum of 60 from the top and 60 from the bottom. So now I'm not having to measure and guess, well, does my minimum height need to be 400 pixels or 500 pixels? I've got my content in, and then I adjust my height. So now, no matter how big the screen or, well, it the screen size does matter, but there will always be 60 pixels at the top and 60 at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna, just going to give this a background color, actually, so that it, it you can just see what's going on. Oh, no, that's probably not a good idea, actually. Now, I've just remembered that image didn't have a transparent background. Bad mistake by me when I loaded this through. But if I had a transparent background, I would have made this a gray color. Now, that is OK for the desktop, right? That's OK. If I now go to the tablet mode, that is now the tablet mode. Can you now see everything is now not so good? So if I go to the section and I go to the layout, you can now start to adjust the width here. Now at this point, I don't do that because tablets, iPad, iPad Pros, uh, Surface Pros, all these different uh, Samsungs, right? They're all gonna have different resolution widths. If you want to be really clinical and spend the next week of your life and the client has paid you enough money to cover this and cover off every resolution, be my guest. But the world is forever changing, so I don't like to go down that approach. What I instead do is I will click on the section, right? We're in tablet mode. I'll go to advanced and I will then say, OK, I'm going to um, just adjust these values. Whoops, sorry. Unlink it first. I'm going to have 60 and I'm going to go with 20 and 20 on the left and right. However, so just to clarify, I've added in some padding left and right to bring things in. However, the image now is still right up against the edge. 
And that means I'm going to have to now adjust my column spacing over here. So I'm going to go over to column one and that is currently 63%. I'm going to change it to be 60% and I'm going to go over to column two and change that to be 40%. That is now okay, right? That, that, I mean, there is a little bit of a, there is a little bit of a bleed over here. Um, I would have to adjust the image a little bit there. In fact, you can adjust the image. If I go to the style of the image for the tablet, I might now just set this to be 100%. So for the tablet, so for the desktop, I had 300 pixel. I was very specific over that. On the tablet, I've now changed it to be 100%. So we have a controlled look over here, but now I don't have to worry about your size of your image. It's always gonna be 100% of that, and that is 40% of the size. I could shrink this back again to make it 32% and the image will always readjust to the sizing. You play around with what you want. Now at this point here with the text, I strongly recommend that you adjust it, okay? So if it's three for the desktop, I will go with 2.5 for the tablet and I will adjust the subheader and the heading as well and the button as well. Now you might think this is a lot of work going on here. It is not. And we're going to get onto the bit about, just in a moment, about why this is going to save your life later on. Now, just double checking the section, we have 60, 20, 60, 20. Okay, I'm going to go back to my desktop and I'm actually just going to add in 20 here as well. Just in case you have a really small screen, like how small would your screen need to be if, it, if a desktop can't handle 900 pixels? But I've just added in a little bit of padding there as well. It's good practice to kind of have something in there. Percentage also isn't a bad idea, but I sometimes work with pixels on that side. We then go to our tablet, it's looking okay. Now we go to our mobile, and this is where things are now really, really gonna change because we now have column one above column two. So I'm gonna go to column one, and I am now going to get rid of that right margin. I don't need that right margin in. If I click on the section, it has already got 60, 20, 60, 20. It's copied over what we had in the tablet. If I had put the padding in on the desktop, it would have had 15 in there or 20 in there from the desktop as well. So 60, 20, 60, 20, I'm okay with that, okay? Again, you wanna go to your wording and I would say you might wanna reduce it to a two. I tend to work with three, 2.5 for the tablet, two for the mobile and I play around with those figures 0.1 up, 0.2 down, stuff like that. Again, adjust all of your sizings you have here. Now, column two, we're just gonna double check. There is There was no margin or padding on that. The image inside here is 100%. Let's go back over to our desktop. Let's click over here. The image is 300 pixels. Remember, desktop was pixel. Tablet and mobile has switched to 100 pixel. 100, um, uh, let me just put it to 100% actually, sorry. I just noticed it was the wrong one then, 100%, there we go. So we wanna maintain that for the mobile and the tablet. But column two is right up against column one. You can see the divide. So I have the choice now of maybe saying, right, column two, I'm gonna make it be about 30 pixels away, maybe even just 20, all right? You would adjust it accordingly to what you wanna go for. And again, in your section, you could have adjusted the top and mark bottom um, padding as well. So we've done the desktop, we've done the tablet, and we've done the mobile. Again, back to, let's start again. Section, we sorted out the width. We did our column. We didn't mess around too much with that. We then added in our content. We then adjusted the column widths, the image sizing, the text wording, the paddings, and all of that. Let's go back to desktop now. Why did we do all of this? Why did we spend time doing this on section one? We still have 20 other sections on the page, I hope not, to do. Here's why. I will now copy that. I now have section two. Section two has within there the padding, the margins, whatever I had in there, the left and right, and it's already adjusted the sizing of the letter. I might now decide I'm now gonna have a, another image, right? And I'm just gonna shrink this down now. Sorry, I duplicated the image. I didn't wanna duplicate the image. I might duplicate and have another column and I might get rid of this one here. Those images have now brought through the same logic that I had above. Let's just get rid of that. Okay, let's get rid of this column completely. 
this is going to follow through the logic. Look, when I get through to the tablet mode, sorry, the mobile mode, look, the, the lettering has changed, right? The, the padding, everything is there. Now, if you add another column, I could just duplicate this, right? And get rid of the content. If I want to now reuse, have another header on my page. So I'm going to add in another section. I'm going to add in another section here. In fact, I'll go with a one section like that. I could just copy this and paste the style. That has now pasted in the style of the section below or above. And it maintains, look, I'll prove it to you. If I go to my mobile, it's got everything in there. It's got the layout, it's got the no gap, it's got the box width, everything. Let me go back to my desktop. I'm gonna pick up this header here, copy it, drop it in there. That will now copy through the logic that we had before. Look, it's copied through the sizing. So it maintains what you're doing. And it means now that when you move from section to section to section, you've already handled a lot of the mobile responsiveness before you started folks moving on. This is gonna simplify and make your productivity so much more efficient if you follow this approach. Of course, this section could be completely different to every other section. Fine, you go and tinker with it, check it in tablet, check it in mobile, move on. And if any other page in your website now has a similar section, well, you just go to that page, copy it, you might save it as a template as well. That's up to you. But you just go in, copy the section, paste it over into another page. And away you go. It's, it just means that what you're not doing is you get to the end of the website, you've got six pages, and then you go through the cumbersome process of mobile responsiveness. And if you had done it right from the start, okay, you could now apply. I mean, to be honest, you could have a, let me just drop in another header over here, right? Um, let me just make this header be a uh, ridiculously weird size. Let's just put it a different color and just go like that. Uh, let's just go with a, a silly size like that. You could still though, just go over here, copy it, and then just paste the style. Obviously change the color and all that, but then you just paste the style and whatever, and it will now adapt to tablet and mobile as you would set it. However, copy and pasting styles gets tricky sometimes. You might forget to do one and you get caught out when the website is live. Work through systematically, section, column. Don't worry too much about margin and padding. Drop in your content. Then you know what you're playing with. Tinker with it to get it to be roughly the look you want. And then you just go away and play with it after that. Make sure you like, subscribe, share, and follow. And if you don't do anything in your life, make sure you subscribe and make sure you share. But take care and I'll see you soon.